So hi everyone, today I've got a great uh, thing for us to do today, it's part of that Edexcel uh, paper um, oh, January 2013, uh, Barack Obama versus um, Alex Alexander McCall Smith, uh, the number one ladies detective agency with Happy Babetsy. And um, this is a fabulous uh, piece from Barack Obama's book Dreams of My Father, which is a beautifully written um, autobiography of um, his time as a boy, right up to I think when he goes to law school, published in 1995. It's absolutely brilliant, and I strongly suggest you read it. It's really lovely. Um, and here's an extract from it, which is wonderful that we get to study this in English. So how 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 lucky are we? Uh, we'll just take a bit of time out and look at this uh, together. Okay. Okay, so this is an extract from Barack Obama's autobiography, um, Dreams from My Father. This is text two. Over lunch, I explained to a group of boys that my father's a prince. My grandfather, see, he's a chief. It's sort of like the king of the tribe, you know, like the Indians. So that's what makes my father a prince. He'll take over when my grandfather dies. What about after that, one of my friends asked as we emptied our trays into the trash bin. I mean, would he go back and be a prince? Well, I, if I want to, I could. It's sort of complicated, see. Because the tribe is full of warriors. Like Obama, that means burning spear. The men in our tribe all want to be chief, so my father has to settle these feuds before I can come. As the words tumbled out of my mouth, and I felt the boys readjust to me, more curious and familiar as we bumped into each other in the line back to class, a part of me really began to believe the story. But another part of me knew that what I was telling them was a lie, something I'd constructed from the scraps of information I'd picked up from my mother. The next day I'd begun cleaning my room when my mother came in and said, By the way, I forgot to tell you that, that your teacher, Miss Hefty, has invited your father to come to school on Thursday. She wants him to speak to the class. I couldn't imagine worse news. I spent that night and all of the next day trying to suppress thoughts of the inevitable, the faces of my classmates, when they heard about my mud huts, when I heard about the mud huts, all my lies exposed, the painful jokes afterwards. Each time I remembered, my body squirmed. So this is the second paragraph on that bit of uh, screenshot. I was still trying to figure out how I'd explain myself when my father walked into our class the next day. Miss Hefty welcomed him eagerly and as I took my seat I heard several children ask each other what was going on. I became more desperate when our math teacher Mr Eldred came into the room followed by 30 confused children from his homeroom next door. We have a special treat for you today Miss Hefty began. Barack Obama's father is here and he's come all the way from Kenya in Africa to tell us about his country. The other kids looked at me as my father stood up and I held my head stiffly trying to focus on a vacant point on the blackboard behind him. He had been speaking for some time before I could bring myself back to the moment. He was leaning against Miss Hefty's thick oak desk and describing the deep gash in the earth where mankind had first appeared. He spoke of the wild animals that still roamed the plains, the tribes that still required a young boy to kill a lion to prove his manhood. He spoke of the customs of the lure her elders received the utmost respect and made all the laws for all to follow under great trunk trees. And he told us of Kenya's struggle to be free, how the British had wanted to stay and unjustly rule the people, just as they had in America. How many have been enslaved only because of the colour of their skin, just as they had in America. But that Kenyans, like all of us in the room, long to be free and develop themselves through hard work and sacrifice. When he finished, Miss Hefty was absolutely beaming with pride. All my classmates applauded heartily and a few struck up the courage to ask questions, each of which my father appeared to consider carefully before answering. The bell rang for lunch and Mr Eldridge came up to me. You've got a pretty impressive father, he said. Well, Barack Obama himself turned out to be pretty impressive, hasn't he? But yes. He had a pretty impressive father and basically he was very worried about what would happen if all his classmates met his dad and heard out the truth. And in fact it turned out totally differently. This is actually, um, it will go on and have a look at the ten points now to uh, help us break it down. But um, 
yeah, we, we, I'll, I'll, I'll just put it up on the screen for you. So, I know we all love dogs, so here's a quick shot of Barack Obama with his dog to lighten your day before we carry on the next bit. So, let's talk about the ten points in this text uh, to help you approach the, uh, the text and understand it. Um, so if we take a look at it, it's, didn't, it's done from, the message is um, about a little boy who's obviously fibbed um, and um, the, the subject matter is about a boy in school and his dad comes into school um, to uh, do a presentation uh, and the message is how things probably don't turn out as you're going to expect them to and how probably other messages don't lie um, really isn't it because you might get caught out the images there's not a lot of imagery in there because it's obviously written from the point of view of a little boy uh, a young uh, a boy in school um and there's the literary devices again um not sure about the literary devices really it's very it's written very simply it's autobiography so and it's written from the point of view of a young man um so it's not terribly literary either. The tone is um, quite simple and conversational and matter-of-fact, really. It's got the rhythm and the rhyme, probably, of everyday speech, of ordinary everyday speech, hasn't it? The formal structure is the suspense. We're actually in suspense to see how this is going to turn out, I think, uh, for uh, Obama, because he's lied. And finally, the language is... Um, carefully constructed uh, to, to, to obviously be colloquial it's how he how a little boy would speak really in his own language so anyone can actually understand it it's um in direct speech basically this is this is done with direct speech uh, and lots of colloquial ordinary oral language but nevertheless it, it deals with some quite uh, complex ideas also there's um absolutely beaming with pride you know those are quite strong um emotive language there isn't there uh, you've got a pretty impressive father again that's fairly emotive as well isn't it um uh, descriptive adjectives there absolutely beaming with pride um and earlier on as the words tumbled out of my mouth and i felt the boys readjust to me um yeah that's sort of a metaphor they're falling out of his mouth he's out of control i suppose that is a metaphor um, um what else I think, yeah, um, you've got, he's sort of describing how he's feeling, personal language. I spent that night and all the next day trying to suppress thoughts of the inevitable, the face of my classmates when they heard about mud hearts, all my lies exposed, the painful jokes afterwards. So there's a list there to, to, to sort of outline exactly how I felt. Every time I remember, my body squirmed. And so you're looking at descriptive um, language here. He's actually talking about how it's actually affecting his, his, his body, how he feels. Um, yeah, but on the whole, it's quite written in quite simple language. Like I, I felt more desperate. I became more desperate. Uh, he describes the deep gash in the world. Obviously, all of this is because he's talking to a, a young class, really. Uh, but at the end, the most important bit is the sort of crescendo. The um, the sort of final suspense is over. And when he finished, this is the suspense. Miss Hetty was absolutely beaming with pride. And then you've got some um, sort of uh, more uh, exaggerated, absolutely and um, beaming. This kind of descriptive uh, language, um, emotional with pride. My classmates applauded heartily. And a few struck up the courage to ask questions. So they applauded heartily, really importantly, heartily. They're really, really delighted uh, by uh, his dad. Um, and so's, so's Mr. Eldridge, who says, you've got a pretty impressive father. That's colloquial speech, isn't it? Pretty impressive. But nevertheless, a very strong word, impressive. Okay, and so then we'll have a look at the questions. And these will help you answer the questions, I think. Name uh, two things that Barrack told his classmates about his father. Um, and the total of this question, uh, six, is two marks. So what did he say? He's a chief, he's sort of like a king of the tribe, um, a prince, he'll take her when my grandfather dies. Um, my father has to settle these fears before I can come, so you can put all of these in there. Explain your own words what Barrack's feelings were when he heard his father was going to talk to the class. So how does he feel? He feels absolutely awful. He's worried about the fact he lied. He thinks he's going to be uh, mocked. 
um and he thinks um he's actually he actually feels it physically and his body uh, kind of you know wiggles really um in your own words you say use different words really and that's in between line 15 to 20 i think uh, he couldn't actually stop himself thinking about all of those awful things um, okay, so there, there, so basically to get those, you need to, to tick those marks. And basically, it's a comprehension question. So let's let's have a look at this question, which is state three things that Barrack's father told the class, um, and there's a total of three marks for that. So what are the three things he said? Um, so he's leaning against Miss Hefty's thick oat desk. That's descriptive language, actually. Describing the deep gash in the earth. I suppose that's descriptive language as well. When mankind had first appeared, he spoke of the wild animals that roamed the plains. He spoke of the customs of the Luo, how elders received the utmost respect and made laws for all to follow. Um, so, yeah, he's told us... Um, what they taught, he also told them all about Kenya's struggle to be free and about probably about colonialism, really, about the British uh, who seem to have taken over Kenya and, and of course, America as well. And there was a, it was a fight, wasn't there? Um, the, the War of Independence. So, there you are. Lots of things you can put in there to get three marks. There's much more than three things there, so it's easy to do, I think. In lines 40 to 44, Barrett's classmates and teachers react positively uh, to uh, Barrett's father. So, uh, and there's another uh, three marks, I think, for that, isn't there? It's just gone off the screen now. Uh, so when uh, when he finished, Miss Hefty was absolutely beaming with pride. So you've got those lovely um, descriptive uh, verbs, beaming, um, uh, an adverb there, absolutely. All my uh, pride... Um, very strong word. All my class applauded heartily, so they all clapped and clapped loudly. Um, and, and they even asked questions. They struck up the courage because obviously he seemed to be very impressive. Um, and the dad seems to have uh, done a very good job of taking everything very seriously and answering them very carefully. Um, and finally, the teacher actually came and said, you know, um, how what a, what a brilliant father he had. So a, a jolly successful uh, visit, really. And he obviously pitched it perfectly correctly. Um, so it's a, it's a lovely piece about a little boy getting worried about his dad embarrassing him and of course he fibbed as well uh, and it turned out really really well I think didn't it yeah so refer to both text 1 and text 2 to answer the following questions this is worth six marks which text do you find the most helpful in explaining what it's like to meet someone for the first time you may choose either text, but you must explain your choice carefully. So you need to think about the the uh, Happy Babetsy text with the number one ladies detective agency, the one, we did, the one I did on the other video. Give two reasons why you choose this text and one reason for not choosing the other. In your response, you should make close reference to the text and the language that the writers use. So that's exactly when you start writing about the... Um, 10 points really uh, so we could actually say one is fact the other fiction one is about a person's real father the other is not one is positive the other is not and comments should be made about the writer's language and techniques so um, in uh, Alex McCall Smith the number one ladies detective agency happy um, that basically it's understated and humorous um, and um, it's, it's written from um, uh, the third person point of view um and it's 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 um actually exploring um the the, the feelings that she has but in a very understated humorous fashion and this one um is more um you know is exploring um a father a father's um impact on coming into the class and the language is again very colloquial and um uh as people speak because it's 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 from the point of view of a a young a young man whereas the other one when happy Betsy speaks it's from a sort of naive sweet innocent perspective isn't it and then you have the inter in intervention of the wise and um clever uh, mama Babet mama Ramotswe regularly throughout the the direct speech haven't you so you need, just need to unpick that one sort of um 
is 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 a, from the omniscient author, the a third person, and the others from the first person. So one, you get that kind of perspective that Happy doesn't really quite understand, doesn't seem to, or on one level, uh, understand if it is her dad or not, and it, she seems to be not exploring how badly she feels. So it's understated. Whereas this one, he does actually explore his feelings, doesn't he? How how hideous he felt about his dad coming in, and that he's got all those kind of um, those that language that is, is emotive as well. That how wonderful they all felt after it was very successful that emotive uh, descriptive language of feelings really so all of that stuff that we talked about the 10 points are really helpful to just get put yourself something to say um, and indeed it's helpful with any text that you approach uh, so we give you an art a mark for a clear personal response for a reason the text not chosen and one mark for an example to illustrate the reason so you need the point quote explanations um, and the, the 10 points will really help you with that. We're not, yeah, something about the form and structure as well, that, that suspense as we go through the Obama one is really lovely, isn't it? And then it all turns out okay, but obviously the other one we never find out, do we? So that's interesting too. All right then. So finally, you take an hour on this section um, and you have to use ideas from both text one and text two in the extracts booklet to answer this question. So you can use all the ideas from um, Happy Babetsy meeting her dad and how he, he turns out to be really not a very nice person uh, to um, Obama who's, uh, whose father comes into school and uh, turns out to be much, much better. And he, he really impresses everybody. And he's, he's a very dignified, intelligent man who, who educates the children um, with a lot of respect. So um, you've just attended a party for family and friends. Some relatives uh, you had never met before attended this party. So imagine, you know, great aunt Bet or, um, you know, someone turned up who'd never met before, Kim Kardashian type or whatever. Write a letter to a friend about the party, explain your thoughts and feelings about meeting relatives for the first time. So you can imagine a relative you're going to meet for the first time, whether it be a Kardashian or um, a sort of, um, who's another person who you could describe, or an Obama type, very, very impressive, or someone who you actually have in your own real social circle who's interesting and entertaining to write about. So perhaps somebody you know... Um, um, you know, you can model it on one of your friends or something who you think is quite impressive or quite awful, or, or someone you know who you know misbehaves appallingly or behaves absolutely wonderfully. It was very glamorous or something. So um, you don't actually—it just has to be made up, really, doesn't it? So have some relative who inspires you. So write a letter to a friend about the party, explain your thoughts and feelings about meeting this relative for the first time, and you'll focus on your thoughts of what you thought they'd like you like before you met them. So you know uh, how excited you may be to see them, and how it's going to be great to have on your age or something. Imagine some 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 relative who you, who's come over from Australia or America or Europe, and you know you think they're going to be your best mate, but it turns out totally different. Things that they did when you met them, so you know how embarrassing they could possibly be. Perhaps they're sort of very very odd. Or really, really, you know, really glamorous. Um, and how you felt after you had met them. Think carefully about the purpose of your letter and the audience for whom it is intended. So you're being, the A01 you're being examined on is read and understand a variety of texts, selecting and ordering information, ideas and opinions from the text provided. So you can steal ideas from those texts that we've looked at. You have to adopt, adapt forms and types of writing for specific purpose and audience using appropriate styles. So you need to have some, uh, you know, basically write as you're writing for a uh, the purpose of your letter which is a friend about the party so you have to write it you know very uh, accurately uh, and aimed in the language that you speak to a friend but not obviously um, slang uh, and text speak write clearly using a range of vocabulary and sentence structures with accurate spelling paragraphing grammar and punctuation that's five marks the 20 marks is for actually you know adapting your style of writing uh, to, to write to your friends, so make sure you do paragraphing and try and entertain them, and perhaps do a bit of suspense, you know, about like Obama did. That basically, was it going to work out at all? You should address all areas, um, and some of the points that you can make. There, uh, you can make. You're worried about how your friends will react. You're worried he might not live up to expectations. You might he might be embarrassing. Did not know much about them. Your excitement, you know, they could be really, really glamorous and you know, really successful, and you can't wait to see them. 
you can imagine that they're sort of a I don't know, someone who you think is really successful in the media and pretend they're your relatives. Uh, drawing, you know, they take over, they take advantage of the hospitality, they expect looking after, they're not doing anything to help, eat all the food, spill everything, have a fight, impress you, impress your friends, tell stories, um, you know, they could do all sorts of things, really sing, do amazing dance, or just leave halfway through annoyed. You know, just imagine this guest who's either the most perfect or most awful guest, and try and um, exaggerate it a bit for entertainment. Make sure you use semicolons, colons, um, complex compound um, sentences. Um, and simple sentences to um, entertain me and make sure you try to use rhetorical questions and all the ingredients of the recipes I've told you about emotive language um, and perhaps some imagery and description using all those um, wonderful uh, ideas that we looked at for using the senses as well perhaps they can smell either nice or horrible um, after cannot be sure they are who they say they are um, well, you could, you know, um, then it says after what you think of them, do they using the family for free food or uh, do you feel familiar with them, can't wait to see them again or have they impressed you or your people? Um, try and just like unusual really, um, uh, the response, maybe they leave behind you know, a thousand pounds for you or, um, or give you all a gold necklace or um, have you all um, doing yoga together or whatever, have a bit of fun with it really. Um, okay, and um, yeah, the exa examiners were looking for those AOs that we talked about at the beginning, but particularly work on um, vocabulary and sentence structures and try and, you know, shape it for your audience and entertain them. Okay, that's worth, hang on, I'll tell you how many work marks it's worth. I think it's worth about 30, 35 marks, isn't it? So, you know, I can tell you here, actually. Where is it? 10, 30, yeah, 35 marks. So, you know, you're going to have to make sure that you're doing a quite an extensive piece. And make sure you plan for 15 minutes beforehand to get the best ideas in there. Planning, absolutely vital. And we talked about that in the other uh, films that I've done, haven't you? Make sure you do your plan. Don't ever start without a plan because otherwise it just gets rambling and boring. And your, your idea is really to entertain me and try and steal as much as you can as the examiner. Steal as much as you can from these two pieces that you looked at, Obama and um, uh, the Happy Babetsy piece. Okay, because actually one of the things does say, uh, I read and understand a variety of texts, selecting and ordering information, ideas and opinions from the text provided. So you're, you're, it's the ideas you're stealing from the text here, isn't it, really? You can't obviously copy it identically, but using these ideas and not turning out quite how you thought they would. All right, well, good luck with that, and email it to me, if you, and I'll mark it for you, and that goes for everyone else in the wider world. If they want to have a crack at it, I'll mark it for them. All right, then, good luck. I look forward to reading it. Make sure I'm entertained.